welcome to another episode of the Peer Geek Podcast, a bonus episode coming to you direct from North Carolina in the United States. Now, I've been really fortunate to have been asked by the National Peer Institute to do the opening keynote at their recent conference. Now, I wanted to share with you the audio from that keynote entitled, I Can't Teach That or Can I? Thank you to everyone who helped bring the conference to life. I'm really excited that I've been able to do that, and I certainly hope that you get something from today's keynote. Now, if you'd like to see the actual video that goes alongside this, then head over to thepeageek.com forward slash I can't teach, and you'll be directed to the full video. But here you go. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Before Artie disappears, can we stop? Stop there. Artie? Freeze. Can we just give him a big round of applause for making this happen? And stand up too. I think it's well worth it. Thank you. All right, so I am from Australia. I do speak a little bit funny. That's definitely a bit of a theme here with our speakers um, who have traveled from lots of different places to come here today. Really excited to dive into the things that I can't do. Lots of things. Now, when I was asked to present here, people were sort of expecting that I would talk about PE and technology. That's going to be part of the journey. Is it, can you still hear? Yeah? But I think there's so much more to the story than just technology. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you today. I can't teach dance. <laughs> Hands up if you're the same, because I definitely can't. I know Wendy's here somewhere. Where are you, Wendy? I know you're a great dance um, teacher of the year at some stage. Where are you? I'm going to see you at some stage. Excellent. So I can't teach dance. I'm really not that rhythmic at all. Uh, it's a bit of an issue, and I know there's lots of things that we as teachers probably feel the same way about. I can't umpire basketball as well. Like, I'm pathetic. <laughs> Horrible. I don't exactly know all the instructions and the signals, but I still do it in my class. And this presentation is a bit of a look into how that's actually been made possible. Are there some things that you can't do? Now, I know PE teachers, we're expected to be able to do everything. Is that, is that true? I mean, we're pretty powerful, we're pretty good, but we do get thrown some interesting things from time to time. I want you to think about what you maybe struggle with. What's something that you try and avoid? And if there's nothing there that you do struggle with, just help me out here and everyone stand up in the spot where you are. Now, I want you to grab your right hand and place it on your left ear, like that, and your left hand and tap your nose. That's hard enough. And all you need to do is just uncross them and do like I'm doing as fast as you can. So uncross your arms and recross them and do it as quick as you possibly can so you go from a point to a tap and a point to a tap. There's some very interesting stuff happening in the room right now. So if you can't, <laughs> if you can do everything and you couldn't do that, you can grab a seat, then think about that moment. But I think there's lots of stuff that we can't do. I'm riddled with things that I can't do. Or can I? And hopefully throughout the presentation you're going to see exactly what I mean by that. That was me when I was younger. Not quite, but... When I was younger, I had a fascination with superheroes. Did anyone else like superheroes and comics? And I think we all sort of resonated with that. I love comics. Anyone else read comics still? Come on, let's be honest. I, yes, there's still people there. We get them, though. That was me. I actually dreamt of being super, super fast. Did anyone else want to be really quick? like lightning, like, 
um, the flash. That was me. It didn't happen. Never got this superpower. Ever did. Never happened. So maybe I'll pick something different. I dreamt of flying. Anyone ever had a dream about flying? Like floating through the clouds? I wanted that. It never happened. Never got it. So many years passed, like I mean many years, and it still never happened. Even though I have a recurring dream about flying. It's quite funny, it happens regularly. So, I became a PE teacher. I couldn't be a superhero, but I became a PE teacher. Hands up if you feel like you're a superhero in your class. Give yourself a bit of a cheer for that. I think we all do something pretty impressive. It was, the, it was the second best thing that I could do, become a PE teacher. I got connected online with my friends, etc. Filled my head with knowledge, information, and then an idea struck me. You know, did it finally happen? Yes, it did. I actually have seven PE superpowers, which I'm very interested to share with you today. And I feel like all of us have access to these powers through this conference. And some of you have other powers that make you an incredible teacher. But these are the ones that I've identified that have helped me be the teacher that I am now. Superpower number, what is it? One. One. Does anyone know what country that is? Yeah, <laughs> says it. I teach in a small school right at the bottom. Hands up if you're in a school that has or, you know, a really tiny population. Me, that's definitely me. I feel like that sometimes. Who, has anyone ever felt that experience, like they're lost at sea? They've got no one to connect with because it's small and isolated? That happens, that was me. Superpower number one is connection. Connecting with people. Whether it is online, like it has been for me, whether it is here at events, the number one superpower has been connection. There's a couple of people in this room now, and in fact, there's a myriad of people in this room who meet that superpower for me. Where are you guys? You're standing right there. One of you is there. Yeah, they definitely resonate with the connection superpower. There's plenty of people who are connecting, sharing, learning all of the time. And here's just one example of that. They collaborate daily on Twitter and Voxer. Give a bit of a shout out if you actually use some of those tools. If you're a Voxer person, give yeah. a round of applause. Well, that's what they do. They collaborate daily. They feel isolated. Adam's in Saudi Arabia, which is a long way from anywhere. So he connects with his peers who just happen to be on other parts of the globe. And that's a common theme with people in this room. You don't have to be lost at sea. Because of that, they were able to create a project called So You Think You Can Balance, which is a collection of people teaching balanced skills to each other. And their students were all doing a project. You can see on the map that it was participated in, in multiple countries, which is really impressive. Give them a round of applause for that, really good. <clears throat> Superpower number two, what is it? Two. two. This is the second one, obviously. Who remembers planning that lesson that was a bit like this? <laughs> crunching up pieces of paper, it wasn't perfect. I know I have. You've spent hours doing it, like literally, hours and hours and hours. Who's ever done that? A long time planning and organizing things. I know I have. This happened. Has anyone ever had a lesson that they thought they, it was going to be a standout, but it just literally wasn't? 
I absolutely have, being honest, definitely. So I, I think superpower number two is reflection, the reflective process. The thing that we all probably do and don't realise how powerful it is. A couple of people in this room here are without a doubt, I've seen them, superstar reflectors. Lots of others, but plenty of people here. Um, where are they? Joe's there, and is Andy here? Give them a round of applause. All right, we're going to be doing that. Now, it's not just because they're online and very visible, so we benefit from their reflection, but it's because they are doing the process and making it part of their, their profession. So we've got Joe's blog, which is very much about her journey, the things she's doing, the things that she sees as being beneficial. Helps her, but helps everyone else. And you can get access to that yourself and learn from her. And then we've got Andy's blog and website, which is exactly the same thing. A journey through his classroom, the things that he struggles with. And I think he admits that he puts most of his failures and so forth present there for people to read. Helps him, helps everyone else. So reflection is a massive thing that we can all have and do. It doesn't have to be a website, but it has to be part of something that we are doing in our instructional process. Number, what is it? Three. Three, superpower three. Who remembers some of those things? Yeah, <laughs> that's a Walkman. Do, who had Walkmans? I, I mean, that was the best thing I ever had when I was younger. A video camera on the left-hand side. It looks like it would break your shoulders carrying it. That's a cell phone. You look like you're calling a military airstrike. That's only 10 years ago, a little bit more. Combined total price of all those items, you're looking at greater than $15,000 at their time. Expensive. They didn't find their way into class. Then this happened. We got mobile devices, and I see them in the room now. Then these things called apps appeared everywhere, and that became a new word, and everyone had access to them at an affordable price. So superpower number three, for me, and for many of the people in this room, is mobile. Things and technology can be done while on the go. There's plenty of examples of people doing incredible stuff with that. I've got two for you here. So two of our keynote speakers in the front, Nathan and Joey, I think use mobile really impressively. Who's used Joey's skill posters before? Hands up if you've ever seen those. Great. They're a credible resource. If you're coming to one of my sessions later on this week, you will see these in action. And the thing I love about them is anyone, any mobile device can scan the QR code, which is this, and play an instructional video. So in my classroom, my students can scan and work on the activity at their own ability. You've just basically cloned yourself as a teacher using those. Pretty incredible. So really impressive stuff, and 100% free at his website to go and download um, from different sports and so on. Now, Nathan has done a lot of stuff that recently I've been pretty impressed with, one being the Periscope use. Who's heard of Periscope, the app, before? If you haven't, it lets you stream to the internet live. So you can point here at the conference and, and tell the world and show the world what's happening. It's really incredible insight into what you could potentially do. So what Nathan has done is given his potential parents at his school a glimpse into what's happening in the class to advocate for his program, to advocate for the things that are happening. Um, swim gala. So his actual swimming or field day activities, streaming live to parents who can't be there. How powerful is that? Completely free. So mobile is really impressive and certainly worth checking out. Do we have anyone periscoping now? We do. Of course, that's what happens. Superpower number four. We're getting there. That's me. It is, it definitely is. In high school, doing some triple jump, obviously. 
Um, I loved it. I mean, I was a big fan of it. That's what I grew up doing. More so in elementary age, get into high school, we start getting excited about other things. And my you know, training and everything dwindled a little bit. That was until I saw a video of myself. Except back then, it was a big camera like this. <laughs> and it took about three weeks to get the footage. So the teacher filmed it. Three weeks later, we got a cassette tape put it in, and I saw myself doing triple jump. What happens when you see yourself? Do people get motivated? Do students do? I do. Get to review my performance. I move from being someone who was, you know, a little bit motivated, maybe more so unmotivated, and changed it to being completely motivated about improving myself. And all it took was a 10-second clip of me doing triple jump. That was it. God, is that what I look like? Wow. That's pretty impressive. So superpower number four is video. I think it's something that we can all use at varying levels in our class. Now, here's just one example of that in action. I will need the music, um, the speakers for the computer turned on as well if they're not. This application, basically, it lets you tag video. So if I was recording my class, and I had particular students in that class that I wanted to create a highlight video for, it would let me do it. So I could be recording them and tapping their names as it's happening. And it would create separate videos for each student of the things they've done. So it's a very easy way to highlight skill to people. Now, here's just a small clip of a highlight that happened in my year seven class the other day. So we were teaching volleyball, or well, I was teaching volleyball, and we were learning about the serve. So I was tagging all of the moments that showed when that didn't go so well. They were still learning. This is it there. Hopefully you can hear it. You see the fail? Drop to the ground. So the app allowed me to create these five second snippets of the things that happened in my class. And the person who recorded this wasn't even me. It was a student who was injured who became the video referee in the class. Another failed attempt. So after five minutes of recording, we got this nice little snapshot. And then what did I use it for? Any suggestions? Questions, answers. Gave them insight into how and what they were doing. That's a video tagger and the power of video. And most importantly, the students just love seeing themselves. They really love seeing themselves. Motivational. Let me just turn that up. What superpower are we up to next? Five. We've all been here. How long until you guys go back to school? Is it like a few weeks, months? Very soon. You're in this moment right now. Is that sound going to connect go up anymore? Hopefully. We'll see. We've all been there. We're about to go back to school. And your administration tells you, or maybe they yell at you, <laughs> more of a directive, and they tell you something along the lines of, you've got a unit, and in that unit, you're teaching yoga. Has anyone ever had to attempt to teach that before? Good, I see some hands that have grown up. That's the face I made when I attempted to teach it. Attempt being the very strong word here. Let's see how that actually went. The first time I ever taught yoga to a group of students. <laughs> Found these characters somewhere. Stormtroopers and Captain America. You can see I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> they are really engaged. <laughs> so much so.
Not fans. They did not like that lesson at all. That's my first yoga experience, by the way. But it hasn't actually stopped me from going on and teaching it in my classes. And the way I make that possible is through superpower number five, which is outsourcing. Outsource it. Find an expert. Find someone who's more knowledgeable than you to teach it on your behalf. Connect with someone. Like, for example, Jessica Shawley. I'm sure she could teach my yoga class via a Skype link. I know Adam has taught and used and taught a class from the other side of the planet to his kids. That's outsourcing. That's finding a colleague who knows something better than you. We don't need to know everything. We shouldn't think that we do. I don't know yoga, but I'm still willing to learn from others who do. So Jessica is that example. And as many people here also have their strengths. For me, I was able to teach yoga because I use this. Has anyone ever used the Yoga Studio app before? I mean, it is mind-blowing. You've got you know, over 65 just full yoga videos, instructional videos that you can use completely for free on an iPad or an iPhone. So that's who taught my class. I got to join in. I got to model how my activity was, how I expected it. And I also got to walk around and assist students. So it was like having two teachers in the class. There's the professional. Certainly wasn't me. And I was able to join in, outsourcing. Number six. six. We're nearly there. <laughs> Laugh at that picture. So, some teachers, and we've, we've probably all identified with people like this, some teachers keep their lessons completely secret. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but there is a culture of keeping your best stuff to you completely. I reckon that superpower number six is sharing. Sharing as much as you possibly can. You might think that takes away from your lesson. It does the complete opposite. Superstar Cher is sitting in the front row here. Phys Edagogy team, can you give them a round of applause? And I could give countless examples of people who are doing exactly the same thing, sharing religiously. Because when they share, they have to be critical of their own work. Someone adds to it, makes it better, and we all grow. We all prosper. And this conference is about sharing. And the Phys Ed Camp is about sharing. Their Phys Ed Summit is about sharing. Anyone ever attended the Phys Ed Summit before? Yeah? It's, and coming up next month, it's a 24-hour completely free professional development that you can access from your pajamas <laughs> for 24 hours. I mean, you can get access to this stuff for free, and teachers from all over the world are sharing with each other. That's the power of that superpower. Number? Seven. Say it again. Number? Seven. Awesome. The last one. Who's ever been hunting before? Yeah, quite a few people. Do you catch something every time? Some days, no. It's pretty tiring. It's fun, I guess. But some days, you probably don't get anything. And you've got to wait until you go again. That's like professional development in some ways. It's like hunting. You go to a conference, you hunt some new, non new knowledge, sometimes you get stuff, sometimes you don't. What these new superpowers have made possible for me, and for many people here, and all of you have the ability to access it, is to move away from hunting knowledge when you get the chance, in your break, to farming it. Farming is great because you hunt the seeds, and then what happens with those seeds? They grow. That's the knowledge. It's ongoing. It's continuous. You don't have the risk of missing it. So I'm an advocate for farming my knowledge over time, not hunting it once off when I get that conference I can attend. How can I continue the conversation with all of you after and farm and improve myself? So I definitely think that superpower number seven is learning. More importantly, being willing to be a lifelong learner. And that doesn't happen just at conferences. That happens every single day. And we expect it from students. 
So we, I think we need to model it. I've been, had times when I haven't modeled it, um, which is, which is you know, disappointing, but most of the time I'm open to learning every minute of every day. And there's a couple of people who do that really well in the room. Well, we've already spoken about Artie. We've got Dr. Ash Casey there as well. Give them a round of applause. The best part is they are not alone. There's plenty of people who have this idea and curiosity, and I'm going to bet that all of you here today are exactly the same, because it's your holiday break. You're at a conference. Give yourself a round of applause. You're a lifelong learner. <laughs> but what I really appreciate, appreciate about Artie is, I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. He has. He's seen lots of changes. But the thing I'm really a fan of, and what drew me to want to be here at this conference, is his willingness to try something new. He's been online. You can see he's amassed a big following, a big audience of people. And that's a testament to him seeing a need to continually updating his skills and learning and improving. It doesn't just happen online, but that just shows that lifelong learner approach. And we've got Dr. Ash Casey here. I think you dedicated your career to learning. Is that right? Absolutely. But what he does is he syndicates really difficult material and puts it in a language for us, or well, particularly for me. So academic material related to physical education about practice and makes it accessible to, to everyone in the form of a blog and a podcast. Continually learning, continually reflecting. So now, we're at that crossroad at least. With those superpowers, I feel like that. I feel like, you know, the things like dance that I couldn't teach, I can teach now. I can share because I can find someone to make that happen, and I can do it all. That picture sums it up. I feel like that. Give me anything in my classroom, I'm going to be able to do it because I'll be able to connect with someone, I'll be able to find a resource, and that is the power of where we are. So, a bit of a challenge for all of you right now. Your superpowers are literally waiting. You've already got some. There's definitely some new ones that can be gained from the conference here today. So I challenge you to go and find sessions that are going to add to things that you're doing and create the lifelong learning culture that we're after. Thank you very much.